Hi friends. So I'm talking to my son the other night on the telephone and he says, hey dad, I'm really enjoying your videos but you shouldn't just sit on the couch and talk to people all the time because that's going to get boring. You should get up and walk around. Well, okay, let's get up and walk around. <laughs> My son has a YouTube channel, and uh, I'm not going to tell you what the name of it is. Just uh, keep this under your hat. We'll do a little uh, test. I'm going to promote his channel on my channel just as soon as he figures out he ought to promote my channel on his. I think he's got like 12,000 subscribers. <laughs> anyway, it's uh, August 20. 6th and uh, 2018 and we're in Ajijic, Mexico something going on over here you know from the seawall out to the beach is federal zone it's called and um, it's kind of a thing going on here uh, at the lake where people are extending their walls out closer to the lake so They've been unloading um, dump truck loads of dirt and it looks like construction debris. Over there, they're building the wall out and they're making their property go out lots closer to the lake. Um, there's some controversy about that and I don't want to be in the middle of it. To each his own, that's my policy. Uh, speaking of other channels, um, I'm going to address this again. There are people who keep saying, hey, show me around town. And I've addressed this before. There's lots of channels that show you around town. Uh, a couple of them are uh, uh, Jerry Brown Travels and um, Tangerine Travels. Uh, Tangerine Travels is a couple of kids who are traveling around Mexico and currently they're in Ajijic and they're doing great videos about what's around town. I, uh, I don't want to be doing something that everybody else is doing. So I just like talking about my 18 years of experience living in Mexico. So if you want to see uh, what's around town, Check out a lot of those other videos. There's those and lots of other videos. Jerry Brown travels. Uh, he kind of concentrates on how uh, inexpensive it is to find a retired life in Mexico. And uh, I enjoy his videos. He and his wife Lori are a kick in the pants. <laughs> um, I'm going to go in there and sit on the couch now and tell you what I was going to talk about today before I remembered my son said you ought to get up and walk around for a while. Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. I wanted to uh, say today that I am so moved by the 400 responses I got to my last video uh, let's characterize the video by saying I declared my love for Mexico. Um, it's overwhelming to get 400 and some people saying a nice thing to you um, in a day. Not surprised. Um, that kind of warm, welcoming culture here in Mexico um, has been a part of my daily life for 18 years. And I'm saying this so that those of you on my channel who are here because you're thinking it might be something to consider, retiring and moving to Mexico, um, and you have some trepidation about whether or not you would be welcome, go and read the comments on my last video. Uh, it reinforces my belief and my experience that Mexico and Mexicans, and let me include Mexican-Americans, 
are a very warm and welcoming people to all uh, people from everywhere. Enough said about that. Um, I had promised at the beginning of that last video that I was going to give you some of the comparisons between the United States and Mexico. And I don't want this to be a, 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 a negative bash the U.S. Um, video. I don't hate America. You don't have to hate America to love Mexico. It was from that video about building my house here, and when I say I did all the electrical and the plumbing myself personally, people say, well, are you an electrician, or are you a plumber, or did you need to get permits? It's one of the differences between the United States and Mexico that I'd like to just say a word about, and that is that here in Mexico, um, the government doesn't get in your business quite as much as the government in the United States, and I'm talking about the United States governments all the way from federal all the way down to municipal permits, and everybody second-guessing everything you do and making sure. And in the United States, if you want to work on your own house, you can do this. But if it's a rental house, you have to have a professional licensed electrician or plumber to do that. Um, let me give you some examples. And the example that's coming to mind is something that happened to me last week. I still have a small little rental house up in Oregon, and the tenant called and said, hey, I've got a leak in the, out in the yard in the pipe that comes from the meter to the house. And he had dug it out, and he said, we need to replace about two feet of pipe, but he wanted to call a plumber. Said, yeah, sure, go ahead, call the plumber. So the plumber comes, and the plumber says, well, number one, we need to get an electrical, an electrical inspection because sometimes things in the house are grounded through the water pipes down in the basement. And I know this is true. Anyway, okay, fine, we've got to get an electrical inspection by a licensed electrician, and of course that costs some money, and frankly, I don't know how much it was. Um, and then the second thing is, yes, and we're going to need a $300 plumbing permit. Now, remember, we're talking about replacing maybe a hundred dollars worth of pipe. The pipe from the meter to the house, and it's not that far, um, and the connections, whatever. It's not new plumbing. Three hundred dollar plumbing permit. This is the, because the licensed plumber has to protect his license. The city has given him a license, and now the city wants his cooperation to get $300 out of me, of my money, so that he can do his job. That's what I'm talking about when I say the government gets in your business. I don't mind them licensing a plumber or an electrician to make sure that they're going to do the job properly. But then to turn around and charge me that much money so that they can do their job, it's grating on me. <laughs> the bill, the total bill for replacing a hundred dollars worth of pipe was twenty two hundred dollars. And my point is that a significant portion of that was for city permits so that the people who knew what they're doing could go there and do their job. And in Mexico, the government doesn't get in your business quite so much. I'm pretty sure that if that happened here, even if I had to go and hire the plumber to do it, it would have been more affordable. Let me tell you about another plumbing issue I used to have in a rental house. Um, and it may explain why I kind of don't exactly trust plumbers. I know plumbers have to make a living. I don't have a problem with that. I don't have a problem with labor rates being $150 an hour. Um, well, actually, I do have a problem with that. tenant calls and he says, well, the uh, faucet in the tub won't turn off. 
and it wasn't as it wasn't a big gush, but it was a lot more than a drip. So I called the plumber, and the plumber comes and he says, "You know, your faucets are really old, and I don't think I can repair your faucet. I'm going to have to uh, replace the faucet." So I said, "Well, okay, give me an estimate." So the estimate comes and it starts out with, "I have to tear off the wall in the closet in the bedroom on the other side of the uh, bathroom." to get to the pipes to replace your faucet. And my estimate of $750 is not going to recover replacing the sheetrock in your closet. And I told the plumber to, <laughs> well, I'm not gonna tell you what I told the plumber. But what I did was I went to Harbor Freight and I got a special tool myself. I'll show you the tool, hang on a second. Here you go. They're faucet wrenches. At the time, about 10 bucks at Harbor Freight. And I bought a washer kit at Home Depot. That was about less than $5. And I went and I replaced the washers and I owned the property for another eight years and it never leaked again. And I'm still angry at the plumber for trying to get $750 out of me. Here's another difference that I've found to be amusing to me between the United States and Mexico. In the United States, let's say you want to go buy a pair of shoes, and maybe you've got a favorite shoe shop and you just go there and you find what you're looking for, but maybe you don't find what you're looking for, so you go to the mall and there's three or four shoe shops there and you, and you still don't find one, and you go to another mall and you wind up driving all over town looking for something, shoes or something else. In Mexico, there's a whole bunch of sh shops that do the same thing, that are always in the same place. And if you think about it, it kind of makes sense, like, you know, if you're going to go and shop for something, why would you want to go all over town looking for it instead of just to this one area of town? There are streets in Guadalajara that are like blocks and blocks long, and all they do is sell used car parts. Shop after shop after shop. There's one block up there by the historical district I counted 23 shoe shops in one block. And the next block has eight wedding dress stores in the same block. It's like that all over Guadalajara. The same kind of stores in the same place. Now, they have malls just like the United States and they got all kinds of shops and they've got Costco and Sam's Club and, you know, Lots of Walmarts and whatever, but <laughs> little shops, shop after shop after shop after shop after shop, selling exactly the same thing, block after block after block. Uh, like I said, I find it amusing. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up, and please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.